And, uh, here at the Rubber Trap Rendezvous 2018, we have come across a beautiful, beautiful ambulance converted by Paul. So, Paul, thank you for being here and sharing your home. You're quite welcome. And uh, you're from Canada? Yes, Vancouver, BC. And so this is a Canadian ambulance, I assume? Uh, actually, it was stationed in Washington State. We bought it in Washington oh. State. It was built in uh, Goshen, Indiana, and um, uh, had been in Washington for its whole life. It's in 1998. And uh, I hear people ask me all the time about uh, the pluses and minuses of ambulances. Can you just, and uh, I'm no expert, I've never owned one, what are some of the pluses and minuses you considered when you thought about an ambulance? Well, I have a, a pretty extensive background in, in living on small boats and, and building step vans and coaches. Uh, so I've done a lot of that in my life. I've lived in small mobile spaces. And when we were considering the next vehicle, I wanted something that was largely finished because I'm still working and didn't want to start a build from scratch. I wanted something that was well built uh, because that speaks to me personally. And I, it had to have be well insulated um, and decent. So the ambulance really met all those criteria as a traveling and live aboard vehicle. Are you and living in it? Yes. Oh, you are? Yeah. And how long have you been living in it? Uh, we've had it two years. Two years? Wow. Yeah. And in Vancouver, BC. Yes. And how does I, I understand Vancouver is fairly uh, van dweller friendly? What has yes. your experience been? If, uh, the, 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 again, the ambulance is under 24 feet, so legally you're allowed to park a vehicle up to 24 feet anywhere in the in the in the region. You know, on the on the on the street, we have more uh, reliable uh, parking for it most times. But we use it as a mobile office and a site vehicle, so we, we travel all over. And you're working. Yes. And you're, so you, you have an office and you work from your vehicle? Yes. Yeah, okay. I'm a marine surveyor, so I do site work, field inspections, and then write reports. And that's probably real handy to take your home with you. Yeah, it's very nice. I bet, yeah. Yep. And uh, there are some... Uh, now, you mentioned the positives, what made you choose the ambulance. There are myths, and some of them are probably true and minus, about ambulances and... I don't know if you're familiar with some of them. Some people worry that they're full of uh, disease. Was that a consideration to you? Uh, yes, it was, and we dismissed nearly all of the uh, ambulances that were available in big cities. This came from a small community fire hall in Washington State. It was always kept indoors. They didn't have to deal with, you know, drug abuse situations and things of that. And in the 20 years it was in service, it only logged 50,000 miles. So it sort of sort of goes to how much use it had. Um, the ambulance, from a construction point of view, uh, has the has premium plywood on the cabinetry. It's faced with laminate on both sides, and it, the joinery is exceptional. So the point I'm trying to make is that it's really easy to make it sterile. Our ambulances sometimes run just like 24 hours a day and driving constantly and not and not well maintained. That's kind of a myth you hear about ambulances. Well, I, I wouldn't. You know, the mechanical uh, the mechanical uh, maintenance is mandated in in Canada and and, all, and everywhere in the U.S. as far as I can determine. I, yes. And so that's one thing. And, but on, but the wear and tear issue, I think, is what you're you're looking at. And yeah, some of the ambulances we looked at by the time they were retired. We're not good candidates, in my opinion, to you know have a, a home or a traveling vehicle. Right. So just just common sense when you go and buy it. Yeah. Phys physical, uh, you know, physical and mechanical are the two key issues we were looking at, and and this one had everything that we wanted and we bought. Well, uh, thanks for telling us all that. Uh, would you like to show us around? Surely. This is the fridge back here, which is access from the inside, of course. And, and then it's, it's like a standard RV fridge? Yep, standard RV fridge, Dometic, small one. And, uh, and it's the pantry. Um, we incorporated a few plastic shelves. And the uh, beautiful thing about the ambulance is all these shelves are adjustable, so you can move them up and down to suit. And then the next locker aft would be the furnace room. I put in a diesel furnace because so we'd have a common fuel. Yeah, so it's uh, your furnace is then tapped into the main fuel tank. The main fuel tank. Yep. I travel with a woman, so you have to have one of these. <laughs> well, I'm a man, and I like to have one too. <laughs> I may not have as much in it. I do it mostly to tease her than anything else. Yeah. 
you know, these doors <coughs> obviously all open so we can, we're going to expand this with some different awnings at the back to expand our space when we're living. But that's basically yeah. how, it, how it all is. Oh, all it's the, beautiful. All the cabinetry in there was pretty much the way it was. I had to take one out to put the sink in. You know, again, back to your earlier question about cleanliness. Um, you know, all the kickboards are stainless steel. The floor is one piece vinyl. Uh, everything, all the seams have all been sealed with, you know, some kind of uh, bedding compound, silicone based bedding compound. So it's very easy to keep clean. All of the surfaces are either laminate or some kind of metal. There, no, there's no cleaner that you can use on them which will damage anything. This was the biggest locker we had on the vehicle. So we turned this into our shower area. Oh, that's your actual shower. Yeah. Now you're a pretty tall guy. I, that... I have to sit to shower, but my yeah. wife can manage in there. So you, you leave your uh, bucket in there to shower? Yes. Yep. That's it. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we're working on expanding this space again with a, a, like a, a, a collapsible uh, awning arrangement. Uh -huh. um, Velcroed on there so we could have, you know, a little bigger bigger area. Right. But it's it works. And, and you have to access, access it from outside? No, actually, uh, she can access it from those doors, which open from the inside. Okay, it looked like it, but that's yeah. kind of a climb. It, it, it is. Uh, I don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you mentioned you didn't want to have to do any build, and from what I've seen, you've had to build almost nothing. That's correct. We that's just nice. We just repurposed what was there. Now let's take a look at this last pocket and go the other side oh, because we uh, get that generator. My tools are in here. Oh my, that's nice. Wow. That's fantastic. And in this locker, I store my generator, uh, the solar controller, the water tank. I have an air compressor in there as well. Boy, it's... I'm in love. <laughs> I'm in mad jealous <laughs> And the last mode. locker here is our... Our propane storage and uh -huh. the hot water heater. Hot water, on-demand hot water heater. Yep. Very nice. Yeah. Lots of great cabinets and shelves. And well, I guess we should just mention that obviously you're using a five-gallon bucket for a toilet. We're using a self-contained dry system, is what I call it. Okay, <laughs> that's a good name. <laughs> uh, I work on boats and I deal with uh, holding tanks and uh, uh, and have had other wet systems before and. This is the simplest and the cleanest, in my opinion. You either you either like this industrial feel or you don't. It speaks to me. Working on this, the, the, everything is very precise. There's no, they don't cut any corners. Uh, when we go inside, Bob, uh, you'll notice that all the all the plywood in the structure is uh, mahogany ply and it's faced both sides with laminate before they make the cutouts. So it's it's, it's just beautiful. Yeah. I couldn't do better myself. Now so, you're, it's kind of limited for headroom and you being a tall guy, you're, you're a bit over. Yep. No, my wife can stand in here. Uh, I can't quite, uh, you know, and, and when you were talking about, um, you know, pluses and minuses, uh, had I gone to the next one up, uh, in sort of, uh, weight and mass, you know, I could have got headroom, but really we are more interested in traveling, uh, and, uh, working as an office in this vehicle met all the other criteria so I just live with it. Well I'm when you know like with the outside lockers and I live outside pretty right. much even in Canada so when I come back here I'm retiring to the interior uh, so it doesn't bother me. No. Uh, the fridge we keep in here behind these lockers. Uh huh. Again everything's faced both sides the best of fittings it's very secure the doors don't rattle um, and everything's held up hydraulically. This one's leaking. <laughs> so it's it's very cl very clever. Clever yeah. is the perfect word. Yeah, and uh, you know, and everything just works. So when you close it, it just closes. Yeah. yeah. We live in Vancouver, so we always monitor temperature and high and humidity carefully um, because the, if you can't stay dry, you can't stay warm. So this converts to a, a settee, of course, but we leave it down normally. Um, and uh, the rest is pretty, pretty straightforward. You do have to subtract some of your interior volume because of the exterior access, but I like having all of the systems outside to work on so that 
you know, if I'm having to service the, the vehicle, I don't, I don't have to rip things up inside. Uh, the rest of these lockers were all original and they just use sliding uh, doors, but as you can see the finish, the fit and finish inside is nice. All the shelves are adjustable, you know, there's little little features that all came with it that, that just make it all work. It was almost like it was designed to be a home, uh, even though it was designed to be an ambulance. Right, and you know, we have pretty much three ways of, uh, you know, doing everything here. I have a portable butane we're cooking outside. We also have gas. We also have a two burner electric uh, to maintain us in the winter. If we're not using the furnace, I permanently mounted an oil filled heater in there to, uh, you know, at 750 watts that keeps this place even in the winter quite comfortable. And this is just, you know, more storage. Mm -hmm. Keep yeah. your DVDs, CDs, <laughs> you know. And this is the original uh, AC heating unit, which uh, on an ambulance, because they're carrying people, is all thermostatically controlled. Uh, the motor is seven, I'm just guessing, 7.3? 7 7, 7.3, yeah. Yep. They lasted a good 7.3s, and uh, we've had you know no trouble with it, very low mileage. It's a legendary engine. Yeah, and so uh, you know it uh, does everything we ask of it. We've, been, we've put over 10,000 miles on it. And, and uh, what kind of uh, fuel mileage are you getting? We've logged it carefully from Canada right starting on this trip and we travel at 55 miles an hour on the cruise control which is much more accurate than uh, foot pedal uh, manipulation and we get 16 and a half miles per gallon. Oh that's fantastic. Yeah. And then up here was all the original control console, console which we haven't taken out because uh, it you know I, uh, I have uh, it had high and low lights on the dome so I took some of them and made them red so if I just close oh, this yeah. for a minute, you know, at mm -hmm. night, at night if we're traveling or just we're camping, we just put in red LEDs, and so that gives very it a, pleasant. And also, it doesn't attract attention. And the sink was probably came with it. No, I plumbed oh, that in. Put that? I plumbed that in. There used to be a, a bigger cabinet here, and this was just a shelf. Uh, it didn't work, so we took the cabinet out and um, yeah, plumbed that. And another big store. Oh no, was that an outside closet in the back? This there? is the back side of the hanging locker. Okay. Right. And this is the thermostat for the furnace, so I can just reach up at night and turn the furnace on or increase the heat. And right. So you know, I mean, there's a hundred ways to do everything in this. This is just the way we did it, and it it works. It's gorgeous, it's uh, and it's super quality. And you know, a modern feel is is a style that some people prefer and name for, and it's just got a modern feel. Yeah, it's, it's Chrome all, and but, all, but all the fixtures are either stainless or just, you know, and all commonly available because it's industrial. Oh. Ambulances, if you shop carefully for them, are a tremendous bargain, I think. Yeah. Do you do you mind if I ask no. what you paid? I paid $5,000 for this rig un no. un with it before the conversion. And they let you out of town with arresting you for stealing it? I bought it on Craigslist. It was advertised for $5,000. I took one look at it and gave the chief a check for $5,000. Wow. And you were dealing with the chief of, yep. po of police or whatever? Uh, the fire hall. It was a community fire hall. Uh -huh. And the uh, chief was a really nice guy. And um, I said, yeah, I'm not going to do better than this. I'd looked at a bunch of them. And, uh, I, you know, we've got another three or $4,000 in parts plus some time. Right. And it must have a, a big uh, alternator. Yeah, it's got the yeah the big heavy uh, 150 amp alternators that the ambulances are all equipped with. They did take the inverter out or off, so um, we only use the inverter for charging laptops and cell phones. So I have an 800 watt inverter. That's all you need. Uh, I don't. A lot of these people put these huge. It's balanced. The system is balanced. I got 300 watts. I got three batteries and an 800 watt inverter. I don't want for anything else. Well, Paul, what a fantastic deal, and you've just taken what was really, really a great rig and made it just a nice, pleasant home. Well, we like it. It's, yeah. uh, it suits us fine, and uh, like I say, I have no plans to change it in the future. Yeah, no, I wouldn't either. This would be the, this might be my rest of the life rig, and you've got the rig that will do that. Good, and you know, uh, we're both happy here, so that's great. Yeah, that's all that counts. Well, folks, I hope you've just been as uh, inspired and impressed as I am. And, you know, it was diligent hard work that found this particular deal. Mm. And that's just what it takes. And you have looked at a lot of lemons before you found this beauty. Right. And But since then, you know, I've, I've, I've kept an eye on the, 
the ambulances that come available. I bought this on Craigslist, so it wasn't like anything mysterious. Right. Um, and I would just follow diligently. And if and in the last two years, I haven't found anything else that I would have bought other than this, to be honest. But I, you just, I bought it within a, a you know, a, a field from where we lived. Within a hundred miles of where we lived is what I was searching. Well, folks, I hope you've been inspired. You've learned some things. You've got some ideas of something you might can do too. Uh, Paul, thank you so much for sharing your home with us. Uh, like, if you like this video, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you later.